Hello, my friends. Welcome back for some more Oxygen Not Included. I'm sure we've all been in this situation before where we're either getting prints from our printing pod or we're starting a new run. Checking out some dupes here and you get these traits that are randomized and it's kind of hard to tell which ones are good, which ones are bad sometimes. And you'll get a lot of conflicting answers on certain traits depending on where you go or depending on what people's experience is with those. So let's go ahead and ruin that just a little bit more by adding our own tier list of traits. Uh, I just whipped this up really quickly on tier maker and we're just going to go ahead and rank or tier all of the traits that are in the game. Kind of talk about what I think about this. Um, it's not necessarily correct, uh, but yeah, it's just my opinion. So you might have stuff that differs. Stuff may be tuned differently either now or before or in the future or whatever. But yeah, let's talk about what I think about this and then we'll generate some big old arguments on the internet about who's right and who's wrong. All right, let's go. So if we start off with this buff trait, uh, this one is plus three strength, which is an increased carrying capacity and tidying. Uh, this one's one of the better ones in the game and I'm tempted to put it somewhere in here. I think I'm gonna put it here because carrying capacity and supplying and stuff like that is something that a lot of your dupes will actually do. Um, so, and this is so useful for somebody that's actually like a supplier or something like that, just to get this buff right off the bat. Uh, buff, lol. Well, this trait right off the bat. I guess it's a buff and a trait that's named buff, but sure. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it up here. Got a strong start. However, on the exact opposite end, we've got caregiver and no, just no. I only say this because doctoring and medicine and that kind of stuff is just so useless nowadays. Uh, you can go for long periods of time without really paying attention to this at all and be totally fine. So I'm going to drop this down here and say that amongst all the other traits you could potentially get, this one is just a waste. You might as well get something better if you can either randomize or if you can uh, get somebody different from a pod or skip it or something like that. So yeah, throwing this one down here. Diver's Lungs is also not super interesting. Definitely not this bad, but maybe here... Um, this is only like minus 25% air consumption. Overall, that's really not that big a deal. Like, you're gonna need uh, four dupes with this before you even see a benefit of a single dupe's normal consumption. And it's just not really that interesting to me. So I'm gonna drop it here on this pretty bad one. Definitely a lot more you could get that are much better. Early bird. Uh, I'm gonna drop this one here. This one's one that is not one I would go for every single time, but if it comes on a dupe, I would just be like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, this is going to give you plus two to all attributes in the first morning hours of a cycle. And I can't remember how many blocks there are actually in a cycle, but it's the first three time blocks, whatever that is. And you'll get uh, a bonus to attributes there. I want to say it's probably like one-sixth or something like that of the schedule. I'd have to look it up, but uh, it's not something that I would say like is overall like the greatest thing ever but it's pretty good germ resistance um this one has changed a lot over time i think with this one can sufficiently just say meh it's it's okay it's not bad the actual resistance you get to some of these germs is not going to be that interesting um it's not gonna it's not that powerful i should say uh actually the more i think about this the more i think this is just not not even really meh it's more kind of pretty bad only because a lot of times with these uh, germs and stuff, you're you're going to get to a point where they're not really exposed to germs anymore, which means that this is kind of a dead skill at that point. Uh, so I'm th I think I'm going to drop that here. It can be useful in the early game. It can be a little bit useful if you have dupes that are running into very germy areas, but germs and medicine as a whole is just not really that crazy nowadays. So yeah. All right, gourmet. Plus three cooking, minus one food quality bonus. This is also a just no. Uh, this is one that if you have a cook, they're going to get this skill anyway, and you're probably just going to have a cook that's dedicated to do nothing but cooking. And the minus one food quality bonus basically means they're going to be getting a morale penalty all the time just by default. And getting a positive trait that has a penalty with it, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can sign up to that. All right, Grease Monkey. This one's pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to drop it here here uh, mostly because this is something that's not going to be applicable to like every single dupe that you have uh, these ones are going to be like yes you should take it no matter what 
I think these ones are going to be like, yeah, they're good on the right dupes or they're good in the right situations. And this is one where if you have operators, definitely something you want to do as it does increase the machine operation speed. Overall, it's not a huge deal, though. I'm actually tempted to drop it down here, but I don't know. I'm really on the fence between these two areas. I think I'll leave it up there. All right, interior decorator. Nope. Iron gut. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, interior decorator will be constant morale loss, and they're getting a bonus in something that you're almost never going to use. If you have an artist, you're probably not going to be making a ton of decor because decor has an effect on morale, but not nearly as much as like rooms and food quality and stuff like that. So yeah, it's bad. All right. Iron gut, uh, immune to food poisoning. This one's okay. I think it's a little bit better than germ resistant because if you don't have super tight control over your food or your hand washing, which is, in my opinion, not super valuable in the early game. This is something that you can be okay with. But once again, once you clean all your food and make sure they're not going to be exposed to food poisoning, this almost doesn't matter. It's kind of a dead skill. So if we really want to split hairs, I'd probably drop it back down here and put it a little bit higher than germ resistant. But these are not all going to be sorted. This it probably needs to land in here and not in meh. All right, mole hands. This is uh, very, very good. I'm going to drop this in the very top one in the oh yeah category. That's just because a lot of dupes are going to be digging, especially in the early game. Once you get to super late games, it's not going to be that important. But by the time you mine out pretty much the whole map, uh, they've already kind of paid for themselves anyway. And everyone's skill is kind of going to be pretty equal. So, oh uh, no, I think I'm talking myself out of this. Maybe this deserves to be here. Only because of the end game when there's nothing left to dig. Yeah. Mm. We should also say that these pretty solid ones, if they're on the right dupes, these are incredible. So if you were to go back to the game and you were to get one of your very first dupes that had this trait on them that was dedicated to mining, they'd be awesome. They would speed run through all of your digging tasks. They'd be great. Uh, but in general, I just can't, I can't put it up here only because it's just not... It's not as universally renowned, I would say. All right, Night Owl. Same thing as Early Bird. I'm just going to put them right next to each other because they get the exact same bonuses, just a different time of day, both at the same durations. And ideally, you're going to be rotating dupes on different schedules anyway, so they're not all using the bathroom, not all eating, not all doing everything at the same time. Especially in larger colonies, this is a big deal. Uh, no taste, plus one food quality bonus. Uh, this is basically just getting a constant morale boost by default. I think I'm going to drop this here. The extra morale boost is okay. Uh, morale is something that I find kind of annoying to kind of to micromanage on a whole bunch of dupes. So this is one that's not going to break the bank, but if it's on a duplicant by default, I'll be okay with it. It's nothing crazy. All right, quick learner. This one's probably the best one in the game. I'm going to send this one straight to the top. Uh, only because this is going to make your dupe just better the whole game, no matter what they're doing. Uh, you c this would be appropriate on anyone, and especially if at the beginning of the game, you can get it put on your researcher, because these first three dupes should probably be a miner, a builder, and a researcher. That researcher will also speed run a lot of things, so if you're getting really obsessive about what these guys can do, uh, Quick Learner is amazing for your researcher and is really good for anybody else, so I'd put that up there as well. Twinkle Toes. Uh, this is close to the top. I don't know if I can put it all the way up there. Maybe I can. Maybe. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can only because every dupe moves. There's very rarely a case in which your duplicate's not going to be moving around very much. Maybe like a cook or something like that, but just moving around the map and especially going to the outskirts of the map, your athletics makes a huge difference. So if your whole colony had Twinkle Toes, you would have insane productivity. So I guess you could look at it through that lens. Like if everybody had Twinkle Toes, if everybody had Buff or everybody had Quick Learner, uh, your colony would be pretty awesome. All right, Uncultured. This is also one that basically just gives you a morale bonus. And since it's going to be static and not a huge uptick, I think I'm going to drop it here. Also, the more I think about No Taste, maybe could maybe sneak it up into here only because it does give a little bit morale, more morale than Uncultured by default. So they kind of are in the same place. Uh, I think I'll I think I'll leave it here, actually. OK, so those are all the positive traits. So if you take a look back here, you might notice that you are basically forced to take a negative trait as well. 
Let's rank those also and see which ones are really good and which ones are really bad. So start off with allergies. Um, this is one that can really vary depending on what map you're playing. So some maps, they will not have to deal with this at all because you'll probably not be growing any bristle blossoms or planting any plants that put out this scent. So if that were the case, I'd probably put it like maybe here. But on the starting uh, asteroid and on most asteroids that are not the forest biome, you will eventually want to use bristle blossoms and this is really bad. So because of that, I think I'm going to drop it somewhere in here, maybe here, only because at its worst, it's pretty bad. At its best, it's kind of a non-issue. So I think I'll leave it there. All right, anemic. Minus five to athletics. Ugh. This is even worse than, than the benefits that you would get from Twinkle Toes. I think I have to list it at the very bottom. Again, these will eventually be overcome over time. But the problem is that this is so bad. Like... You'll be risking suffocation in a lot of cases. You'll have them take forever to do pretty much anything. This can sometimes result in a dupe that literally will do jobs that they just can't complete uh, because they're so slow. And you might as well just not even have them at that point. So this one's pretty devastating. All right, biohazardous. Decreased germ resistance. Um, because this one is listed in pretty bad as a, bon as a bonus, I think I have to put this a little bit higher. This decreased germ resistance is going to fall into meh, only because I can't really get super excited about this one way or the other. Uh, germs are not nearly as big of a deal as they used to be, so I don't know. I think that's fine here. Bottomless stomach. Uh, I'm tempted to drop it somewhere in here. This doesn't seem that bad, but the problem with this is that this will often force this duplicate to eat more than once a day and eat at weird times, and you'll get these annoying suffocation, or not suffocation, starvation warnings that will be like, this dupe is starving, but it's really just because they process food faster, so they need more calories per day. So this can get really annoying. I don't think it's devastating, it's just obnoxious. So I think I probably have to drop it here. All right, flatulent. Uh, funnily enough, the farting one is the one that really polarizes everyone, but this one I think by default down here for most people, I just can't do that. Um, only because this is not that big of a deal. Your ventilation system should handle it. Um, I don't know. The, the basic idea of what this does is your duplicate will occasionally just produce a little bit of natural gas somewhere, so if you have like airtight rooms or something like that, I don't think that's that bad of a deal, only because they're usually in a suit. Um, so I don't know. Maybe here. It's really, it's not that good, but it's also really not that bad. It does represent a tax on your ventilation, so that kind of is not, not great. Alright, gastrophobia. Can't do cooking errands. Woo! Straight to the top. Um, this is totally fine. Only because the, uh, cooks that you have for the size of colony that you have is usually, like, one cook for maybe every 15 duplicates. Uh, depending on how fast they are, what kind of food you're cooking, and that kind of stuff. I just can't be mad at this one. If I see this one, this is something that I will consider instantly. All right, increased bathroom use time. It's okay. Um, it doesn't spend a tremendous amount of time, but it is lost time. So maybe I'll drop it here in meh. Um, as far as I could tell, and this may have changed over time as well, this basically doubles the time that they spend using a bathroom, but the time they spend using a bathroom isn't really lo that long in the first place, so I don't know that I can really get that upset about this one way or the other. All right, loud sleeper. Ready for this? Yes. I only say this because loud sleepers are something that you can totally control yourself. This is, all you have to do here is just build a bedroom for this person by themselves, Assign them to that bed, and the problem is done. It's over. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So, if I have an instant solution in which I can solve this, cool. It's over. It's done. It's not a big deal. All right, mouth breather. I think the mouth breather I probably have to drop all the way down here. Um, this is this is not great. Uh, this is basically representing an extra dupe's worth of oxygen being consumed by one duplicate. So. This is not good, uh, especially in the early game. This could totally throw off your calculations, and you can think about this as if maybe three or four of your duplicates are mouth breathers out of like 15. That may force you to add an entirely new setup just to f get extra oxygen for these guys. It's kind of annoying, so I'd probably put it at the very bottom. All right, narcoleptic. Um, 
This is probably not this bad, but it probably lands about here. Um, I only say this because narcoleptic dupes will just be in the middle of doing something and they'll flat out fall asleep. That just means lost productivity, and depending on the severity of the job that they're doing, that could be pretty bad. Uh, lol, no pun intended there. But yeah, that's I'd say that's definitely a thing that belongs in this category. All right, noodle arms, minus three carrying capacity and tidying. The opposite of this is buff, which is chilling up here. So the, the gut reaction is just to drop it all the way down, but I don't think it's that awful because there are duplicates you could get away with not needing this, like a researcher, for example, uh, or a cook that just stays in place all day or something like that where they don't really need to do a lot of carrying. So somewhere in here, maybe, maybe here, because you ultimately don't want to have to deal with dupes that do that. All right, pacifist. Straight to the top, once again. Uh, this is easily one of the best negative traits because the amount of attacking that you will do in a given run is extremely low, maybe a handful of times ever. So if that's the trait that I'm getting as my negative, great, I'll take that. All right, slow learner. This is the exact opposite of quick learner, as we can see. So I need to drop that all the way down here because this basically means they're gonna be worse at everything throughout the course of the game. So I'm gonna drop it down to the very bottom I think that that doesn't need a whole lot more explanation there. Um, if your duplicate just can't learn things nearly as fast, they're just going to be worse at everything. So, yeah, not a whole lot of discussion to be had there. All right, small bladder. Um, this one's also quite bad, and only because throughout the day they will need to go to the bathroom just as or twice as much as the rest of your dupe. So I think I have to put it in the same place as bottomless stomach because they're effectively the same thing. So I'm going to put it here and expand that. Ugh, my duplicant got messed up. Get down here, other duplicant. There we go. All right, so let's talk about squeamish. Uh, this is another very, very good one. Any one of these where they can't do a certain skill, I don't care about that. If, if one duplicant cannot do a certain skill, with the exception of these two, then I'm not going to worry about that. And doctoring is something that I literally don't do in my runs at all. So if they can't do something I was already planning on them not doing, then okay, whatever. All right, I'm going to skip these two. We'll talk about those in a sec, but yokels uh, cannot do research errands. I had a conversation with somebody about this recently saying that this came along with a worse learning speed and a lowered science, but I don't think that that's true, or maybe this was happening before any sort of tuning changed. So because of my rules that I had up here, I only need maybe one or two... Uh, researchers throughout a whole colony, so I think I have to put it there. All right, let me run a test, because I was running this test earlier with these last two traits, and I could not ever get them to appear. So let's see if we can and see what happens. And I just want to do this for just a bit, because I'm pretty convinced that these don't appear in the game anymore. But they are listed in documentation. I've seen them before. This is one of my least favorite ones. Unless I am blind, I have not seen it, and I ran through probably several hundred dupes in preparation for this to kind of get the text that appears on all these in-game, so that I could make sure that that's clear on those cards. And I have not seen either one of these for a very long time, so I'm guessing that they were so bad that they just got patched out. Uh, I don't know, I can't really confirm or deny that, but I haven't seen it for a long time. So let's just go back here and say that uh, Unconstructive is literally one of the worst things, maybe not quite as bad as Slow Learner, but it's really, really bad. Uh, it's definitely down there. Unconstructive is a big problem if they can't do building because there are instances in which you need the whole squad to come up and help you build something. And if you have a few of them that can't do it, especially if it's like an emergency, like you really need to get a new oxygen setup going or you really need to get new food planted or something like that, you need all hands on deck all the time. These guys are just gonna be like, nah, I don't care if we die. So, yeah, they deserve to be down here. All right, trypophobia, last one, can't do digging errands. Um, this one's not that big of a deal, as at least not as far as unconstructive. I'm tempted to just drop it somewhere in here, I think. And I think this only because digging is something that you could need to do as a big squad. It's not super common that you need to do that, and by the end of the game, it's not as big of a deal. I might be talking myself into moving it out of here, though. Let's maybe go... Let's maybe go here. This is still kind of bad, especially in the early game, because if this is one of your first three dupes, that's pretty pretty devastating. But if, if Irritable Bell was one of your first three dupes, then eh, okay. So yeah, 
I think this is it. I think that my opinions have basically settled on this setup right here. So go forth and spread the word. No, I'm just kidding. If you guys have any of your own opinions, I will post links to this tier list creator down below and I'll post the link to my own so that you can see a quick reference if you're interested in that. But yeah, that's all I had for this video, you guys. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to get into, into some good old YouTube comment fights, please do that down below over this tier list. I'll be back with more tutorials, more videos, all that kind of fun stuff here really soon. So stay tuned. Have a great holiday season and I'll see you guys really soon.